In this video, we're going to do a hands-on example with a couple of simple if tests. Now, if tests are things that we do all the time. It means we do some kind of test and an outcome results based on the result of that test. A good example is tax brackets. You see, if you are single, you pay 10% income tax on everything you earn up to $9,275. If you're married, you pay 10% on everything you earn up to $18,550. After that, you pay 15%. You pay a higher tax rate after that. So you might say, what is my marginal tax on $10,000? If I earn $10,000, what am I paying for $10,001 for that extra dollar over $10,000? Well, if I'm single, I'm going to pay 15%. But if I'm married, I haven't hit this threshold yet, I'm still paying 10%. Now, note that I started that sentence with if. I said, if I'm single, I'm going to pay 15% on the first dollar I earn over 10000 If I'm married, I'm going to be paying 10%. I started the sentence with if. That's a simple if test. Now, if you use TurboTax or any of the online tax software, it's full of these if tests. You see, when you click one button, it estimates your tax. Then you put in a number, it estimates some other tax, and so on and so forth. Uh, taxes are full of decision logic like this. One we might be able to visualize a little bit easier is here, this Create a Truck page. This one's Ford. Just about every manufacturer has a similar page. Here's Toyota's. This is the example I used to use. Um, you see with this what you do is you actually walk through kind of like a wizard where you make a selection here then you can go to cabs and beds make a selection here then you can go to engine configuration make a selection here go to colors uh, the reason I'm using Ford's is because it, it has all the selections on one page so it's a bit easy to see the decision logic that's happening no, no preference on Ford Toyota GM whatever your your manufacturer of choice is this is just an easy way to demonstrate it so here's our first if test. Notice the three different cab types. Regular, which is basically just uh, maybe a two or three passenger cab. Super cab, where you maybe have two or three passengers up front, and then maybe a rumble seat in the back or a place to put your toolbox or something like that. And then super crew, which is a full four-door truck. But the trade-off here is if you have a bigger cab, you either have to have a longer wheelbase or you have to have a shorter bed or some combination of the two. In other words, the Super Crew is the longest cab, so I cannot put the longest bed with the longest cab. Uh, I can put a medium-sized cab, and that's going to give me a fairly long wheelbase, or I can put a shorter bed, and that gives me a little shorter wheelbase. Now, why is all this important? Think about parallel parking at UC. And I'm completely honest with you, when I bought my truck, that was a major consideration. I knew every extra foot of wheelbase was that many fewer parking spaces I could get into when I parallel park. So nonetheless, you see we have a little trade-off. With a big cab, we can only get the smallest bed or a medium-sized bed and a longer wheelbase. You see how that wheelbase kind of lengthened out. With a super cab, what can we do? We can do the medium-sized wheelbase, I'm sorry, the medium-sized bed, or the longer bed, okay, cannot do the shortest bed with the super cab. With a regular cab, we can't do the shortest bed. We can do a medium bed or a longer bed. So each of these are decisions. The decision that we make on cab determines the size box that we have down below. Now, I don't want to make my example specific to Ford, so uh, we might just make this more generic instead of using their terms. We might uh, you know, we might, instead of super crew, we could say double cab. Instead of five and a half foot, six and a half foot, eight foot, we could say small, medium, large bed. Why don't we go ahead and do that? As a matter of fact, I have already started this exercise in a previous video. And you see, if I run it, it's going to prompt me right now with a cab. Super cab, regular, or super crew. Uh, so I'm going to say super cab, and it just confirms that I've picked the super cab. Because Super Crew is a Ford trademark, I'm going to change this to double cab, like so. And you see, because I've defined it as a constant, I only need to change it in one place, and then I can run again. And we'll see that our prompt will change. Instead of regular Super Cab and Super Crew, it's regular Super Cab and double cab, which is kind of an industry-accepted term. Okay. 
Now, after this, I want to make another decision, which is, we'll say, uh, select a bed type. We'll use the same model we did before, where we set up a string array, and we give it three values, short bed, medium bed, long bed, and then we'll use a similar J-option pane as we've done above. Since I described that in a previous video, I'm going to do it a little more quickly here. String bed length equals new string, square brackets on both sides, but the one on the right contains the number of string values we're going to store in this array, which is again going to be three in this case, short, medium, and long. Bed length, so I can store three values here, one associated with index zero. Bed length zero equals short bed, okay. Bed length three, uh, two, well, sorry, one equals medium bed and then bed length and then we'll say square bracket and two we'll say long bed and terminate with the semicolon okay uh looks like i misspelled this one i'll fix that quickly now we know it's a good idea to make constants out of these shift control c we'll turn them into constants i'll go ahead and select short underscore bed that's fine okay medium bed uh shift control uh shift alt c again medium bed is fine yep that's good and long bed, shift, alt, C, long bed, and there we go. And now we've made some constants out of that. Okay, now, uh, just like we did up on line 25, I'm going to say J option pane, capital J, capital O, capital P, everything else lowercase. Show input dialog. Okay, and remember we're using an overloaded method here, so we're going to say null, comma. Uh, now, what message do we want to show to the user? choose a bed length okay uh, what title do we want to have on this pop-up bed selection okay what type of pop-up is this j option pane dot question message okay uh, what icon do we want to show not worried about icon because the question message is already going to show us a question mark what selections do we want to give the user let me double click so we can see this in high def. We want to give them the predefined selections we've made in the string array called bed length. So bed length. What's the default bed length we want to use? Um, we, let's do medium bed. I could put in the string literal, but we know that's a bad idea. This is where we much prefer using constants. So I'm going to say medium. And you see, as I start typing, I can control space and it will autocomplete. It's another nice advantage of using constants. Okay, we want to save this value in a variable. So once again, shift alt, but this time V instead of C. Hit enter. And we're going to call this one uh, selected bed length. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's enough to get us started for now. I'm going to hit save and let's just quickly run this and make sure that it's giving us the prompts that we expect. So right click and choose run on create a truck. We've already seen the cab type before. Now, uh, select, okay, that's good. Now the bed length, medium bed, short bed, and long bed. Once again, notice bed selection matches this parameter here, the title of our box. The message, choose a bed length, matches this one right here. And then the options that we're showing the user are the options that we've shown up here. Okay, now what are we going to do? First of all, I'm going to take away this J option pane show message dialog. That's going to get annoying. Secondly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put together an if test that makes sure we've made a valid selection. So in other words, if the user chooses super crew or we're going to, we call it double cab, we cannot choose a long bed length. Let's try that one right off the bat. So I'm going to say if, let's say, selected cab dot equals and let's say uh, what was our constant so selected cab we're going to say super crew I should probably change that to double cab as well so um, I'm not using Ford's term again if selected cab equals super crew okay if note I have an if test within an if test here if the selected cab is super crew then we're also going to say if selected bed length equals and we're going to say long underscore bed uh, sorry long underscore underscore bed 
Okay, then let's show a message. We're going to say J option pane, show message dialog, null, comma, sorry, but you cannot choose both. And then we'll uh, we'll say we'll say double cab and long bed. Okay. Okay. Let's run and see what's going to happen. Now take a look at this and kind of compile and run it in your head first. The only way we're going to see this message is if the user chose the double cab or what we're calling here super crew, and also a long bed because we know that double cab and the long bed combination not available. Any other combination though? No problem. Okay, so let's run and see what we have. Okay, we're going to go ahead and choose the double cab and we're going to choose long bed. Sorry, but you cannot choose both double cab and long bed. So if it's super crew and long bed or double cab and long bed, we're going to get that message. Now let's try it Let's try it where we choose the double cab and a different kind of bed. Double cab and medium bed. Let's try that. No error message this time. Right click and run again. Okay, so we're going to say regular cab and let's say long bed. And okay, no error message. So you see the only way to get to this error message is if both of these are true. We've chosen the double cab and we've chosen the long bed. So that's a simple example of an if test. And what we have here is a nested, nested if test. In other words, if this is true, then we're going to do everything within the clo open closed curly scope that I'm highlighting here. That means we're going to run the second if test. If the second if test is true, we're going to run everything within the open and closed curly scope that I have highlighted here. So note that the test go, uh, corresponds with the logic that's going to run in the open and closed curly combination. In other words, the only way that this is going to run is if this is true. If this is false, then this part's not going to run. So that's a simple look at if test. There are many more permutations that we can look at. I'm going to go ahead and stop the video now. Uh, what we're going to look at in the next video is an else test. And then we're also going to start looking at maybe some other combinations like an and and an or and other things like that. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.